guys and welcome to the HJW Gaming Channel and another Commander Build Guide video. This is going to be a slightly different format to some of my previous videos, so let me know what you think of it down in the comments. So, King of the Dead. He's a tier 3 commander that gains respect through the prophetic excerpt item. He's defined by the game with the leader role, meaning that at level 20 he gains plus 5 army command, and he's said to lead undead units well and have control ability skills. As you can see, his might, focus and speed are pretty well balanced, though his primary damage is dealt by focus. His unique item is the Coil of Dunharrow, which can be a very useful item for him, giving him again more might, more focus and also bonus attack for his undead units, as well as the Way is Shut ability dealing focus damage and inflicting madness in the first round. So this item can be very beneficial for him, though it's by no means essential. So if we look first and foremost at the gear recommendation I have for King of the Dead, exquisite gear wise, the only item I can really recommend is the Cutlass with Melee Might. Reason for this is we want the bonus attack and damage for the King of the Dead's units, and his primary units in a roleplay server are going to be just a mono stack of melee dealing units. So this will give him a nice damage buff. For chest piece, we want to use the quilted armour with focus protection. The reason for this is the primary unit, the Oathbreaker, that we use on him is weak to uh, elemental damage. So the quilted armour with focus protection can stop you getting hit hard by Sauron or, more importantly, Galadriel or Gandalf the White on the good side. Headpiece wise, you have two different choices. The Bone Mask with Hysteria can be a very good choice as it can increase the HP of the mediocre Oathbreakers uh, by 3. Similarly, the Brutal Helmet can do the same, uh, but this increases Might and not Focus, unlike the Bone Mask. Uh, the difference is basically whether you want to use Hysteria to inflict Madness on the opposition every 3 rounds, or Melee Vigor just to reduce that damage received by your melee units by up to 6%. For an accessory, I'd recommend the Drums of Moria, and with this you can use either Bane of Dwarves or Haste of Soldiers. I personally prefer Bane of Dwarves, as you will be using King of the Dead primarily to face good side, and good side use a lot of Dwarven units. But Haste of Soldiers isn't the worst choice, as it can increase the speed, but the Oathbreaker with King of the Dead are pretty fast anyway, so personally I prefer Bane of Dwarves. Now, for Flawless Gear... There isn't actually a full amount of flawless gear I can recommend, only a weapon and an accessory. For the weapon, I'd recommend the Obsidian Dagger with Resurrection. This will grant additional damage to your undead units and additional heals as well, which can be very useful. And then for accessories, I'd recommend either the Palantir of Orthanc with Might of Soldiers for the bonus attack and damage by your melee units, or the Entdraft Calabash with Wound Treatment. This increases the HP of your units by up to 6, and also increases the amount of healing that your units can receive from King of the Dead skills. Chest piece and headpiece wise though, the Quilted Armour, Bone Mask and Brutal Helmet can't really be massively improved on, so I'd recommend just carrying on with these. The reason for this is there isn't a helm that can give more additional HP, which is the most important thing we're trying to give the Oathbreakers, and there isn't a chest piece that can resist elemental damage better than the Quilted Armour, uh, potentially there's some which have resistance, but they only resist up to 30%, whereas here we're really trying to focus on that focus protection with 60% when fully refined. So I would just stick with this. Troop Synergy for King of the Dead. As I mentioned earlier, the main troop we're going to be using on him is the Oathbreaker, as this is the sole undead unit currently available to good side players in roleplay servers. So it's the only unit really that synergizes with King of the Dead. In order to get access to this unit, you will have to occupy a Caves of the Dead neutral camp, which are available in Langstrad and Paths of the Dead. The primary strength of the Oathbreakers doesn't come from their stats. They have extremely low defense and extremely low HP, which is why we were trying to boost it with that gear. However, it does instead come from their individual unit buffs. The Ethereal skill allows these units to take 90% reduced physical damage. This makes them immensely strong against good side, as almost all good side units, save the Keeper, deal physical damage. Similarly, commander-wise, very few deal focus damage, only really Gandalf the White and Galadriel dealing a high enough amount to really trouble the Oathbreakers. The only cost for this is the units are unable to be healed, 
but thankfully one of King of the Dead's skills actually ignore the fact that they can't be healed and provides them with some healing. So this makes these troops immensely good synergizing with King of the Dead. The Oathbreakers also deal focus damage. So against enemies that don't have resistance to focus, they will deal very strong amounts of damage. As for those that don't know, elemental damage ignores the defense stat of the units that they come up against. The primary downside, however, of these units is that they have very low stats. So if damage can be dealt to them, they will die quickly. And additionally, they cannot be wounded, meaning go to the apothecary, they immediately die. So you'll have to hire more units to replace any that are defeated, and that can come at quite a high cost in gold. So let's take a look at the build. There's only really one build I'd recommend, and this is specifically designed to focus against a good side, as I said earlier. So let's run through each skill and why it has been chosen. First up is Betrayer. This gives a flat bonus damage to your allied units of 21%, but more importantly, once it gets to 15 out of 15 skill points, enemy and allied units cannot be healed. Now this is brilliant, obviously the flat damage buff on its own is very useful, but meaning that enemy units cannot be healed in any rounds at all is one of the strongest anti-heals in the game. Which means if you come up against healing focus commanders, such as uh, Gandalf the Grey for example, reducing that heal means that you're almost completely cutting off a ton of their allocated skill points right off the bat. And then we have the two sub skills which are confusion and intimidation. We're taking these for the reduction to their focus and also might and the ability to inflict stuns or silence to the enemy commanders. Silence meaning that the enemy commander cannot activate their skills so it almost delays the skill by a round and stun meaning they can't do any attacks or activate skills at all during that round. Sometimes we'll allocate one point to the top respect zero skill in corporeal. The only reason we'll do this, and I'd always recommend it being the last skill point you allocate, uh, is that it allows your commander's attacks to deal just some focus damage. So whereas he's just normally dealing physical damage, I imagine most of his gear is focused towards uh, focus, so you'll just deal a little bit more damage by making him deal focus damage. In the respect three skill tree, we're allocating two points to men of the mountains and one to focus wrath. We're not that interested too much in Men of the Mountains, though it does have a slight usefulness in increasing King of the Dead's focus and also making the allied and enemy units deal minimum damage. Now the Oathbreakers have a very low spread of damage, with only uh, one damage point separating their minimum and maximum damage, but this can be very useful if you come up against a unit such as the Sharpshooter, which has a very high range between its minimum and maximum damage, as you're making sure they only deal minimum damage. But the primary reason we're taking this is for Focus Wrath, which allows every third round you can inflict madness on one enemy unit. Last up is the Respect 5 skill tree. Uh, this is headed by Army of the Dead, which allows one undead unit in your army to recover 38% HP when it's got 15 out of 15 skill points. Uh, and this effect is modified by Focus. And the best thing also is this is unaffected by HP recovery debuffs. So for example, that inflicted by Betrayer, or also the Oathbreaker's unit itself, meaning it can't be healed. This ignores all of that and allows the units to recover 38% HP twice. In addition, your units also gain stun immunity, so overall this skill is just a completely fantastic skill. I'd recommend making sure that when you allocate skill points to King of the Dead, Always allocate this, uh, this title skill first before any other skills. This will make sure that the heal activates before any of your other attacks or damage and make sure that you have the maximum number of Oathbreakers, particularly for commander damage, as you want as many available as possible before uh, the commander damage skills come in, as the more commands you have, the more commander damage is dealt. The sub-skills of this is Frightened and Dead Men of Dunharrow. Uh, they're both fairly self-explanatory. Frightened, in the first four rounds against two enemy targets, you have a 50% chance to inflict stun in every round. So on average, you're going to have at least one unit stunned every single round. And then Dead Men of Dunharrow, this means that your undead units receive 7% less damage and also deal 14% more damage. So again, it synergizes well with the Oathbreakers.
So this build obviously maximizes the potential of the Oathbreakers by providing them with a heal, reducing their damage taken, and also increasing their damage output. In addition, King of the Dead himself can inflict madness and stuns to enemy troops, and also silence and stuns to the opposing commander. This essentially counters the strengths of a huge number of good side commanders. As you can see here from the battle reports, uh, King of the Dead really can, against some good side commanders, just completely annihilate them without taking really any loss at all, which is useful when those units are so expensive. So I'm going to take a look here at matchups which are good and bad for King of the Dead as well. Now some of the good matchups are commanders without focus protection. So this includes the blinding barrier full helm, a focus protection chest, resistance chest, or some commanders which have the high alert skill under the white council skill tree. Which isn't taken very often, however focus protection is being taken more and more often against good side due to the rise in the meta of Gandalf the White. Uh, without this, the focus elemental damage dealt by the Oathbreakers you know, ignores the opponent's defence and can absolutely cut through them. However, if you reduce the focus damage by up to 60%, obviously that's going to massively cut King of the Dead's effectiveness. Uh, another good matchup is physical damage commanders. Uh, the Oathbreakers will essentially nullify the damage dealt by the opposing troops, you know, with that 90% reduction from Ethereal. So this again is a good matchup. Some commanders, such as, say... Gilgalad, for example, rely on the damage output from physical damage ranged units. So if you reduce this by 90%, you have a very good matchup. But be aware that some commanders that have a skills such as Convener or massively increase the damage output of their units, 10% can still inflict quite a lot of damage on their oath on your Oathbreakers due to their very low defensive stats. Now the last good matchup is commanders, as I said earlier, that rely on healing. So commanders such as Gandalf the Grey are completely nullified by King of the Dead's anti-heal. Uh, and in some cases, Galadriel can actually be a great matchup because her heal is one of the strongest in the game and you nullify that. And if you're running a fo focus protection chest, you can massively reduce the amount of damage that she can deal. Now, matchups to avoid. Now, any elemental damage which you don't have resistance from will inflict enormous amounts of damage on your Oathbreakers. So first up is burn damage, which is why I don't recommend running King of the Dead against evil, as Witch King is so pre prevalent. But uh, King of the Dead and Oaths, with no resistance to burn and low HP, will not survive against a commander such as the Witch King, particularly with Alchemists and Convener. Though there's a lot of other commanders that do run uh, Alchemists successfully as well, and similarly King of the Dead will not perform well up against these. Other bad matchups are any kind of focus protection, as I said earlier in the good matchups. So if your opponent is running focus protection, uh, try and avoid these as it will massively cut the amount of damage you can deal. And lastly, again, as Simile said, very, very high damage. Uh, commanders such as Elrond or Dwalin are capable of outputting huge amounts of damage. So despite the minus 90% physical damage, the low stats of the Oathbreakers mean if a huge amount of damage comes in, they'll still die pretty fast. I have gone into a few matchups with Dwalins uh, and Elrons in particular where I've expected uh, to come out with a favourable fight because they use the physical damage and then they've just output so much they've slaughtered through all of my Oathbreakers. So I definitely recommend avoiding these commanders which basically focus primarily on just increasing damage as much as possible. Just to summarise, his main stat is focus and his main, main damage output is focus. His strengths are elemental troop damage, anti-healing, physical damage resistance, stun immunity, madness on your troops is ineffective because you mono stack, and also your troops have a low resource cost other than gold. His weaknesses, however, are all different types of elemental damage, and you're also required to have access to Paths of the Dead and Langstred to get access to the Oathbreaker units themselves. If you're in any other faction that doesn't have access to these, he is almost completely useless. He, overall, he's a decent tier 3 commander that doesn't need high respect. At respect 5, he would be perfectly fine, and I wouldn't recommend going beyond respect 8, otherwise some of his skills start getting uh, lower effectiveness. But overall, as a commander up against good side, he can be absolutely formidable, as he counters a lot of the very meta good side commanders. 
If you have enjoyed the format of this video with the Commander Build slides, I have made all of these available on my personal Discord, which will be available in the very near future. And with that, that's everything. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please drop a like and consider subscribing, and I hope to see you on the next one.